following subject matter is real and only intended for mature audiences. Discretion is advised. People are dead after deputies say a man went on a shooting rampage. I knew a week before she died I was going to kill her. I can tell you the scene out there is absolutely horrific. Nobody knows where this individual may strike next. This is 10 Minute Murder. Welcome to 10 Minute Murder, brief and bingeable true crime. My name is Joe, I'm the host, and thanks for joining today. And a huge thank you to everyone that listened during the spooky season the whole month of October. I tried to create a whole month filled with episodes that were extra creepy or there were movies based on or books based on those stories. And, uh, and it, I guess you guys enjoyed it because the month of October in 2021 was the biggest month for listeners and downloads in the history of 10 Minute Murder. And I want to thank the people that uh, have shared this podcast with your friends and your family, your Uber drivers, your coworkers, your dog groomers, whoever you've been sharing it with, it's been working because um, people continue to listen more and more and more every single day. And it means the world to me. As happy as that makes me, there's one thing that makes me even more excited. It's beginning to look a lot like... No, I'm not going to sing. But Christmas is just around the corner. And to answer your question, no, I'm not going to do Christmas-themed murder stories. I can't do it. It's my favorite holiday. And I've been listening legitimately to Christmas music for the last month and a half or so. If you're looking for a reason to dislike me strongly, I'm one of those people that starts Christmas way too early. My favorite movie, not just around the holidays, but my favorite movie of all time is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. That's the kind of seriousness about Christmas that I'm talking about. And I'm probably going to regret saying this, but I actually considered, there was like a 99% chance that I will not do this. Um, And before I even say it, I know my mom is going to make a face, but um, I considered doing an episode in December on the crucifixion of Jesus. Don't get mad. I mean, it's technically a murder, but I think it would be pretty interesting. But I don't I don't want to make people upset about it. So I'm probably not going to do it. I still think it would be pretty good, though. Again, if you came to 10 Minute Murder today looking to get mad, I've got some good news for you. The story today is going to make you mad. And if you came not expecting to get angry, then um, bad news for you. You're going to. When you hear the details of the story of the death surrounding Kendrick Johnson, it should make you furious. The school day in Lowndes High School in Valdosta, Georgia, on January 11, 2013, had started like any other day. Classes were going on as usual, but there was someone missing. Just no one had noticed yet. At least no one else other than Jackie Johnson, a distressed mother who had come to the school to look for her 17-year-old son, Kendrick. It had all started the day before, when Kendrick had not returned home from school. At first, Jackie had not been too worried because she knew her son had plans to play basketball that evening, but her calls went unanswered and hours passed without any signs of Kendrick. Jackie knew that something was not right, and so she ended up driving all around the school before checking with Kendrick's father and other family members and friends to see if anybody had been in contact with Kendrick. When everyone confirmed that they did not have any knowledge of Kendrick's whereabouts, Jackie started to panic, as any parent would. Finally, as the clock struck 12 that night and Kendrick was still not at home, Jackie filed a missing persons report. Of course, the police initially thought that Kendrick was just another foolish teenager doing crazy teenager stuff, but would certainly show up at school the next morning. That was also the first place Jackie went after a sleepless night full of concern to alert the staff that Kendrick was missing, and she also wanted to take a look around to see if she could find her son at the school. But unfortunately, that hope was quickly shattered as Jackie sat down in the counselor's office. The counselor hadn't heard, Jackie recalled, but then the phone rang. A voice was telling her that they just found a body in the gym. I'm breaking into pieces because I know it's my child. Just moments earlier, at the old gym of the school, Philip Piplow's class was filling out a survey. While doing so, some students sat on the bleachers while others climbed atop a cluster of 21 wrestling and cheerleading mats that were leaned against a wall. Each rolled-up mat stood just over six feet high, measuring nearly three feet across. Suddenly, one of the students noticed a pair of white socks sticking out from one of the mats. Socks by themselves would not have caused a panic, but as the socks were still on the feet of the owner, 
the students began screaming for help. Philip ran to the mats to see what was going on. As he looked inside the one the girls were pointing at with shaky hands, he almost didn't believe what he saw. There really was someone rolled up inside the mat, head down and not moving. Philip said, I reached and grabbed one of his ankles, hoping for a response. There was none, and I knew he was lifeless at that point. At that time, a student had dialed 911. Soon, law enforcement and medical personnel arrived at the scene, locking down the school. It didn't take long for police to identify the person inside the gym mat as 17-year-old Kendrick Johnson. His mother, Jackie, who was still sitting at the school, finally got the answer in the most horrible way why her son had not come home the night before. However, getting answers to what exactly happened to Kendrick turned out to be a much longer and more complicated process. Of course, the first thing the authorities did was to check the Lowndes High School dozens of security cameras watching over the hallways, entrances, and parking lots. There are four motion-activated cameras in the gym where Kendrick's body was found, yet we cannot see what happened. How surprising. Still, surveillance footage shows him entering the gym at about 1 p.m. and walking toward the far corner where the mats were stored. After that, we can only tell Kendrick did not leave and did not show up for his fourth period weight training class. According to investigators, it seemed like Kendrick was outside the range of the nearest camera's motion sensor, and so there was no footage of the events that took place at the gym mats. Without video evidence, authorities had to piece together the story of Kendrick's last moments based on interviews and the autopsy. Soon, they learned that many students, Kendrick included, hid or kept their shoes inside the gym mats. This way, they didn't have to rent a school locker. One student also said that he and Kendrick shared a pair of Adidas shoes and that after class, they would leave them inside the mats for one another. And you can only wonder why anyone would want to toss a pair of gym shoes inside of a six-feet-high mat. But the thing is, the gym mats were not always kept vertically. Before Christmas break, they had been turned on their side. This revelation quickly led to a theory of how Kendrick had gotten himself inside the mat and died. But first, the police needed results from the autopsy. The medical examiner found only minor injuries like some scrapes on the back of Kendrick's right wrist and his right pinky. She determined that the young man died accidentally from positional asphyxia, which means Kendrick's body was stuck in a position that he could not breathe. Afterward, Lowndes County investigators were confident to rule the case as an accidental death. Their hypothesis was as follows. As Kendrick would have had weight training class on the day of his death, he would have needed his gym shoes. So, as we can see on the CCTV footage, he enters the gym and walks towards the mats where he kept the shoes. But this time, the mats were upright, and so Kendrick had to get on top of them to reach down, causing him to fall into the mat, not being able to move anymore. It's unclear how long Kendrick could have survived in such a place, but according to this theory, he likely passed out soon. When a human being is put upside down, organs put extra weight on your lungs, making it difficult to breathe, and your heart has a hard time doing its job. Eventually, blood rushing to your head can cause a blood vessel to rupture or trigger a brain hemorrhage. So as humans, we're definitely not meant to hang upside down for a long period of time. And I'm not trying to mansplain basic human function to you, but I'm sure there are people in this world that have never hung upside down on a jungle gym to know that all the blood rushes to your head and it kind of makes you go dizzy. And that's just from a short time. Finally, the last piece of evidence to support the sheriff's department's theory was the fact that Kendrick did have one of his arms stretched above his head and the other down his waist, giving the impression like he was reaching for something. It all really sounded like a freak accident. As the sheriff's lieutenant said, we never had credible information that indicated this was anything other than an accident. And that could have been it, case solved. But as you can guess, Kendrick's family did not buy it. First of all, there was the question of why on earth the young man, who was 5 foot 10 inches tall, would have tried to reach all the way down into a mat that was 6 feet tall. Why didn't he ask for help or turn it on his side if he really needed his shoes from the inside? Second, the rolled up mat measured 14 and a half inches across while Kendrick's shoulders measured 19 inches. And so his parents don't believe he could have fit into the opening and slid down. There's also the possibility that even though Kendrick would have fallen into the mat, he would not have passed out for a pretty good while, which raises the question of why Kendrick didn't scream for help. And if he did, why none of the students who came to the gym heard his voice. Also, one big problem was the shoes. The whole Georgia Bureau of Investigation's theory was based on the assumption Kendrick was trying to pick up his gym shoes when he accidentally fell in. And yes, there was indeed a black and white shoe under Kendrick's head, but it was standing on a pool of blood without being bloody itself. 
And how is it possible that there was another pair of shoes inside the mat next to Kendrick's knees, like they were placed there after him? All these weird details led to Kendrick's parents requesting another autopsy. This time, the findings were very different. On June 15, 2013, Dr. William Anderson reported signs of blunt force trauma, like hemorrhaging beneath the skin of Kendrick's jaw and neck. He seemed to have suffered a fatal blow near his carotid artery, and so death appeared to be non-accidental. On top of that, the second autopsy revealed that some of Kendrick's organs were missing. While it's completely normal that bodies don't always get buried with every single piece intact, nobody knew for sure what had happened to the young man's organs. For Kendrick's parents, this was just one more sign of a cover-up. Following the second autopsy, formal review of the case was granted by U.S. Attorney General Michael Moore. The intention was that a coroner's inquest would be granted, which would allow Kendrick's death to be reclassified as non-accidental and therefore reopen the case. But unfortunately, the request was denied. Yet the Johnsons kept fighting. In 2014, Kendrick's parents filed a wrongful death suit against Lowndes County Board of Education, its superintendent, and the principal of Lowndes High School, alleging that their son had been harassed by a white student, which was not addressed by the school. Then in 2015, a $100 million lawsuit was filed by the Johnsons against 38 people, including three classmates of Kendrick's, Lowndes County High School, the crime lab, five GBI agents, an FBI agent, state officials, and federal officials. The basic idea was that the FBI covered up a murder done by one of the agent's son, Kendrick's schoolmate. However, the suit was quickly dropped due to the lack of evidence. In June 2016, authorities thought the case was finally closed as the Department of Justice announced no charges would be filed against anyone concerning Kendrick Johnson's death. But of course, that was not the case. The Johnsons were not giving up. In June 2018, Kendrick's body was exhumed for a second time, and a third autopsy was performed only to confirm the findings of the second autopsy. But this time, things began to happen. The sheriff's office could no longer ignore all unexplained details of the case and autopsy reports. And so, after eight long years, in March of 2021, authorities reopened their investigation into Kendrick Johnson's death. The sheriff himself made a promise. This is going to be treated like a brand new case. Finally, Kendrick's family may get answers to what happened to their loved one almost a decade ago. And just maybe, their hard work is rewarded. We'll see if Kendrick's murderer has really walked amongst us free this whole time, or if his death was, after all, just a freak accident. That's 10 Minute Murder for today. Brief and bingeable true crime. Thanks for tuning in today. And if you are brand new to this podcast, make sure you're subscribed wherever you're listening right now. Click subscribe and you won't miss any episodes in the future. On Facebook and Instagram, make sure you connect with 10 Minute Murder. And that's where I post visuals that go along with the episodes. It's never anything graphic or gory, but it gives you a look at the faces and places that we're talking about here on 10 Minute Murder. Links for that are in the show notes of this episode, or you can just type 10 Minute Murder into Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, and it'll pop right up. Thanks for listening to 10 Minute Murder. Stay safe and good night. <laughs>